Welcome to episode five, getting started with KiCad version nine. Last time we finished our schematic. In this episode, we get to assign footprints from the included library to those symbols and create one using the footprint editor. Before we visit the footprint editor, we can fill out most of the details on our parts. We'll click the spreadsheet button at the top in Schematic Editor. We'll reorganize this list by unchecking Show from Datasheet, DNP, which means Do Not Populate, Exclude from Bomb, and Exclude from Board. Hit the plus to add DKPN as a field for DigiKey part number. Click on Reference to sort them alphabetically. This is why we change the placeholders to start with a Z. We'll add these part numbers in the description below for you to copy and paste. Feel free to pause the video and add these, or you can do it after the video. Now that your table looks like this, let's add the footprints. Ignore the buzzer for now. For C1, click into the blank footprint field and hit the little books icon on the right. In the footprint chooser, go to the library capacitor THT and choose the footprint shown below. If you don't see this exact item, just expand the item column. For J1, type GCT and then DC and select that one. For J2, type 1x02 and then 5.00 millimeter. Hit both icons at the bottom. Now you can see the footprints and if they have a 3D model already. The Phoenix PT looks like a good choice. For Q1, our MOSFET, being it is an atomic part, it already has a footprint assigned. For R1, let's type in resist and then collapse the surface mount library by clicking here. In the resistor THT library, take the third one down as we'll mount it horizontally. Now to make the buzzer footprint. I'll go to the DigiKey part page for part number 668-1652-ND. Opening the data sheet, let's take note for what we'll need. The pins are 0.8 millimeters in diameter, so we'll make one millimeter holes. They're 15 millimeters apart. The body has a 30.2 millimeter diameter and the height is 20 millimeters. While on the part page, download the 3D model by clicking here. You could get the 3D model as well as a symbol and footprint from Snapmagic, but that would be cheating. And trust me, this won't be that hard. Click on this step link from Trace Parts as KiCad uses step or STP files quite well. Open the zip file and move that STP or step file somewhere you plan to store your 3D models for KiCad. I'd encourage you to make a folder like Documents, KiCad Tools, 3D Models. Now open the Footprint Editor. Just like in the Symbol Editor, create a new library for your custom footprint to set it apart and make it easier to locate later. Using one underscore buzzers will make it automatically show at the top of the library list. Now be sure that your new library is highlighted or active. Hit the new footprint button and then file save as. I'll name it like this as it follows the KiCad format, but then I'll also add the DigiKey manufacturer part number as well. This name will also be in the video description, so you can just copy and paste it as it's a bit long. Double click on ref asterisk and change it to BZ with two asterisks. Move these text strings off to the side. Right click to change the grid or change it at the top to 2.5 millimeters. Click on the orange circle for add a pad. 
We need 15 millimeters between our pins, so drop it at negative 7.5 X and 0.0 Y. Hit Escape to switch back to the Selection tool. Double click on the pad you just added. In the Properties, change the pad type from Surface Mount to Through Hole. I looked at the Through Hole buzzer footprints included in the KiCad library. They all use a square pin for pin 1, and they also happen to be the positive pin, so we will too. We'll change the pad shape to rectangle, the size X and size Y to 2 millimeters, and the hole size X to 1 millimeter. Remember when I first put my pad down that it was a surface mount pad? That would only need a front layer. Don't make my mistake and forget to look closely to see if the mask layer was removed on both the front and back. To check, double click on the pad and make sure the front and back mask layers are checked. This keeps the solder mask from covering these pads. For pad two, select pad one and copy and paste. Drop it at 7.5X and 0.0Y so they end up being 15 millimeters apart. Change pad shape to circle. Change the grid to 0.1 millimeters. Be sure the layer is on front silk screen. Hit draw circles. Start at zero by zero. Click once to start. Click again to stop at a radius of 15.3 millimeters. So it will be just bigger than the 30.2 millimeter diameter. If you can't get it exact, make a circle, hit escape to get back to the selector tool, then double click and enter the diameter there. Do the same with front cord yard, stopping at 15.5 millimeters. Let's add a plus sign to be sure we'll insert the buzzer the right way. Usually this type of thing is on the fabrication layer, but no harm having it print right on the PCB. Change the layer to front silk screen, hit T for text, and we'll change it to three millimeters and three millimeters and 0.5 millimeters thick, and then a plus symbol. Let's put one on the back side too. Just copy and paste it and hit F to flip it to the other side. Note that after you hit F, the color of the plus changes to match the color code of the back sill screen layer. The other buzzers in the KiCad library have a smaller circle on the front fab layer and a polarity marking. This layer is for those who are sending their files off to have a PCB made and assembled. It's easy to add even if we don't need it. Draw your circle to a 15 millimeter radius. Locate the step file we downloaded before. Hit the up arrow under rotation for the X axis. Change the Z axis offset to 18 millimeters. Use your mouse and spin it around. Make sure it looks like it should. We'll go back to schematic editor and add your new footprint for the buzzer. Your table should look like this now. In the next episode, we'll get to see these footprints in action in the PCB editor. See you soon.